In studio with New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap, Mr. Gilstrap. Good morning. Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey. Good morning. Good morning, Matt. Uh, via telephone, we are joined by Board of Education member Damon Wright. Damon, good morning to you. Oh, wait a second, I need to activate his phone. There you go, Damon. Good morning. Good morning to you all. Yeah, thank you for joining us. And uh, we were discussing the low, and this doesn't involve you, obviously, Damon, but uh, Matt uh, found a, a provision that's in the law in regards to the low voter turnout. We had 17.8% in the primary. City elections uh, typically have a low voter turnout. It's a special election all on its own, so to speak. And uh, one of the reasons why people say there could be a vote, low voter turnout is in an area like this where people w live here, but they work far away. Maybe they don't get back here in time to vote, or maybe by the time they get back here to vote, they're just too tired. And they don't want to go stand in the line when they haven't had dinner. They've been gone 12 hours. However, there is a provision that says this. Matt Harvey, what does it say? It's West Virginia Code 3 1 42. Every person that's entitled to vote in an election, if they give their employer three days of written notice, the employer, without penalty to their paycheck, shall afford them up to three hours to, for the purposes of going to the polls and, re, and voting and returning to work. That's in West Virginia. That's in West Virginia, West Virginia Code. Correct. Yes. Uh, and then if it, it, they have a provision, and this it's, it's code hasn't been modified in a while. You can tell by the way it reads and the certain words that they use um, wouldn't be used today. But essential government, health, hospital, transportation, and communication services, um, you know, they have to kind of it, – it implies that they have to work around their schedule to help make sure they get to the polls. So there's there, – the bottom line is there's no there's no impediment impediment to voting mm -hmm. um, and it's encouraged in the law and in fact you cannot be penalized financially if you give your employer three days of written notice that's the law and they have to buy that's the law oh, very good appreciate you finding that provision there uh, damon let's turn the page and get to official board of education business here as it pertains to the superintendent of berkeley county schools ron stevens who's uh, one year contract ends soon he was not renewed for a second term so to speak but uh it was a three two vote damon i think you were one of the folks who voted to return ron stevens correct uh, that is correct yeah why why did you vote on the positive side i think along with michael martin <laughs> well positive side i guess depends on uh <laughs> which side you're on um, uh, well when i mean i just meant like positive <laughs> as in returning the contract <laughs> right yeah I know, I know i'm not making mean. any judgment um, calls no I, the reason i the reason i decided that is because for me, I felt that he needed more time. I, I felt he had one, one year as an interim and then one official year as the superintendent. So I was thinking, I mean, there's, there's things definitely that I felt that need to be improved, but I thought I could be given these another year or two to get that figured out. If um, he didn't have the job figured out in the next, within the next two years, I'd, I'd be more than happy to let him go. I mean, I always say I'm not, I'm not friends with anybody in the board office at all. I don't go out to eat with them, don't go to the weddings, whatever. Uh, I really don't have any friends there, so it's not anything where I've, uh, I have a lot of um, long history with anybody to not make that type of decision. But I felt if I was in the same position as him, I would want a little bit more time, especially because I'm coming into – a lot of issues and a lot of problems that previous administrations didn't have to deal with. Did was this a difficult vote for you? Uh, for me, um, it wasn't that difficult. I mean, it was difficult how it played out, but it wasn't difficult in terms of my decision to keep him, just simply because I just thought he, he needed more time, and, and I was willing um, as long as there were certain things that he would have to do um, to show that there's some type of growth, not just in the classroom, but also in his performance as well. So, um, because I, I'm not going to evaluate a superintendent just based on test scores, just the same way I wouldn't judge a teacher simply based on student test scores. It's, it's overall um, what they're doing. When we interviewed uh, three other board members, they all seem to imply the same thing, that the information with North Middle that came out was a surprise to them, and they seem to indicate 
if I read the room properly, that information was withheld from them at a previous meeting before this all became very public statewide, uh, and they felt like they were misled. Whether that was Superintendent Stevens who did that or somebody else, uh, it seemed to go back to that general area. Did you feel that way? Um, I, I did feel misled um, in, in a couple different ways. When we had the, because I went to North in November, visited school, I didn't really see any major issues there. I knew that, you know, there, um, it's a challenging school, um, but I didn't see anything like the state reported. Um, I think I saw one student in the hallway, maybe two, um, and they um, were told to go back to class and they went back to class. Um, but uh We'd also received a report in February from the school, and things seemed to be, the way that it was presented, things seemed to be going in an upward momentum. Now, the way that we read the data may have been inappropriate because, not I wouldn't say inappropriate, the way we read the data, uh, we may have misinterpreted it because the numbers are going up, but it, they're going up based on the fact that these students were already way behind. They were already one or two years behind in their education. So say if the students in sixth grade, that they're actually on a fourth or fifth grade level because we always have to understand these children when the pandemic hit were in um, either in, in probably an intermediate school. So they missed several years of foundational work. And so now we're trying to, rush to push all these kids to get them back to the level that they need to be when they were very much much younger they didn't have that that foundation so but anyway so the numbers looked like they were going up never heard anything we heard you know state emergency is a possibility but it wasn't anything that really was on the radar it's like that's you know, you know that's way down the line that's something extreme that we don't think that's going to happen and then I walk into a board meeting and I see all these North middle school teachers there and I'm like, what are they doing here? You know, I don't, there's nothing on the agenda for an award on the, we're supposed to get an update and then go into executive session and they come back out and find out, Oh, the state of emergency, no clue, no, nothing, no knowledge of any of this potentially happening was brought to our attention whatsoever. So that was really frustrating um, and angered myself and others because at least the day before something you could have you know given us a heads up saying hey this is what's going on but actually weeks or months ahead saying hey this is there may be a problem here or a more serious problem than that already is and we weren't told that john gilstrap good morning damon <clears throat> um patrick murphy gave us some statistics a couple of weeks ago that are actually kind of frightening uh berkeley county uh 15% of Berkeley County 8th graders perform uh, at grade level for math, and 36% uh, of Berkeley County 8th graders perform at grade level for ELA. Th those are miserable, as, as opposed to, I mean, the, the state numbers are not that great. It's 28 for math and 43 uh, for ELA at, at the state level. At, at the county level, as, uh, as a board member, who do you hold accountable, not just for the problem? I mean, uh, Ron's, Ron's out. We don't, the superintendent's out. Uh, who do you hold accountable for fixing the problem, for turning the vote around? For, for turning the student uh, test scores around? Yeah, I mean, for, for fixing the problem. It's, it's, not, it's so okay. abysmal that it shouldn't be that hard to fix the problem. I mean, to get above the, the state average of 28 percent shouldn't be that difficult when that number is so hard so low well i think eventually we will get over we will get over that and i think um i was looking but at who? the what, what agency not by individual but what agency one, is responsible one. there is no one agency that you could do it it's, it's one thing with education it's a collaborative thing so the, we could have a policy the teachers can can do certain things the parents have their role every single person that's involved in that student's life has a role in increasing um, the effectiveness of their education. So it's not one agency or one individual that can be blamed. Because, for example, you can have the greatest teacher in the world, and they say, hey, do this, do that, et cetera. That child goes home, and nothing is reinforced. 
we can, we can try to have discipline in the school. That child goes home and is taught by people. And I'm, I'm just saying, using this as an example, I'm not blaming parents. I'm just using this as an example. But then that child goes home, and then that child is told by that caregiver, oh, you don't have to pay attention to what they say. Then there's going to be discipline problems in the classroom. Or if we have um, a whole lot of teachers in our in our system may not have the necessary skills, classroom management, or even the history, like they may not be a math teacher. They may have been a history teacher. They may have been whatever other college degree they got. And now they're thrust into a math classroom to try to their best to educate these students. So it's, it's a, and or we have terrible policies that don't help the teachers. So it's not just one group. We all have to figure out where we have failed and what we can do to improve. But you see, here's the problem, and, and actually kind of a trick question, I apologize, and I mean no disrespect sure, no, no through problem. all of this. <clears throat> unless, unless somebody takes responsibility or is assigned responsibility, that means everybody's got their own foxhole to hide in, which means nobody is responsible for fixing the problem. And that just perpetuates the hand wringing that continues the circle down the down the drain that we're heading for. And this is what I find so frustrating as I don't have school kids, you know, to to worry about. So I'm kind of watching this from afar. And we all know that we got to get parents involved. We know that all all of these things are factors. And because we have all these factors, I sense that people take solace of the fact that, well, I can only do so much. So it's somebody else's problem. It's it's you know what, if we can get the legislature to do their thing, then we'll be OK. Or if we can get the the administrators to back up our teachers, well, that will help if we can do this, if we can do that. But nobody's doing that. And I'm, I'm just well, curious, and maybe there's a question here, maybe at, at, at the end, or maybe it's just no, me no, no. voicing I, frustration. I, no, I who who do you see taking that that level of responsibility in a perfect world? If you could rewrite the Constitution, even who would that person be or who would that agency be? That would ultimately turn things around. Yeah. Honestly, parents, as simple as that, if that was the only one, because here's here's the thing. If you if you are raised in a home where education is important, where discipline is important, where listening to to adults and learning are important, then when you go places, you will act in a certain manner. Now, I'm going. I'm taking responsibility for what I can do. I'm not. I'm not take. I'm not saying, oh no, don't put any blame on me. T totally take blame on me. I, I'll give you an example of how people can can even blame myself. Last year we brought up about um looking into discipline and and maybe looking into uh, rewriting the discipline policy or whatever so the school system said oh we're going to have we'll have a discipline committee well they put together a discipline committee i know some of the people that were on it we came back and got a report i found out later or found out even during or after oh that was just a joke <laughs> that was not serious so this this summer i'm going to just do my own discipline committee and get with parents. I'm going to get with people in the school system. Um, Mr. Uh, Haddix, one of the Facebook people, mentioned somebody, a behavioralist. So I'm going to try to get as many different people as I can to look at our policies with me, and we can try to see if there's anything legally we can change. Some things are state law we cannot adjust. But I would like to see what we can do to confront um, and address the discipline issues that we have in our school system. Because if there's that lack of discipline m makes it hard for anybody to learn. Those two or three students in per class make it hard for everyone. So I'm going to do what I can to try to turn things around. I can't do it all. None of us can. But I'm going to try to do, be as collaborative as I can to make a difference and make a change. Matt Harvey. Damon, um, <clears throat> so it's, it, it, the decision has been made to move on to a new superintendent. What – I guess two part question. What does the process look like going forward? Is this going? What? You're good. You're oh. good. Um, <laughs> what's the process look like going forward? And d d does this issue with North Middle School have some sort of chilling effect on potential applicants? Um, I, I would hope that any applicant would see the situation at North or even across our entire school system as a, as a challenge that they're willing to take on because we 
that Berkeley County is totally different than the majority of the state. We're growing. We have more schools than, than anybody else. And we have more we have more special ed students than many counties in West Virginia. So people don't understand how different it is here in the panhandle versus other parts of the state. The process is right now that we're doing a search. We're going to get have um, people send in their resumes if they meet the West Virginia standards to be a superintendent. Um, we'll move they'll move forward to have an interview, and collectively as a board, we'll decide our next steps. Um, see if any of those candidates would be uh, appropriate for our next superintendent. How that works out, I have no idea until we actually uh, meet those individuals. You have a follow up, Matt. I don't know. Yeah. So, Damon, this is, as you know from the comment section on Facebook, there are questions that come in during the course of an interview. You've asked many yourself over the years. So one of those is a very direct question, and, and I don't know that we've gotten a very direct answer one way or the other from any of the board members yet or not. Do you feel Superintendent Stevens intentionally withheld information about North Middle from you and from the Board of Education in its entirety in regards to that North Middle situation that then played out on a statewide level? I'll say he probably, he may have, and and I, but I will give him a reason why. The reason is because there's some information he may not have been able to share with us in case, it, um, say he, for instance, he wanted to terminate the, the principal. He couldn't tell us certain things because we as a board would be the jury that would decide whether his recommendation goes through or not. So there may have been things that he could not tell us. Now, there are things he could tell us, like in terms of, hey, I think the discipline numbers are going up, um, which he, sh he should have been looking into and made us aware, or this is happening or that's happening. But certain things that may have been um, related to possibly removing an employee, he shouldn't tell us those things. Um, but... But I, so I do think he may have withheld some things, but until we or if we ever have a hearing regarding um, the, the, the principal there, it's hard to get a full picture of what may or may not have been withheld. And what is the current status of that principal? Um, right now, they're still on leave. I, I presume that's f paid leave. Uh, I'm assuming so, yes. Yeah. Until, until a, a hearing is... is uh, until they have a hearing before the board. And <clears throat> now there are two issues that are going on with, with North Middle. One is the academics and one is the, the discipline issue. So splitting them out, it seems to me the academics issue is if, if, that's, if, if we're going to take disciplinary action based on, on the academics, we need to look, we, that means you, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you need to look at all the feeder schools. Because you don't get that level of poor performance, 6% in math. You don't get that level of poor performance by walking through the threshold of North Middle. It's, it's every, all the schools that led to that threshold that have a problem as well, right? That's that definitely correct. And I did look at the numbers uh, for the, some of the feeder schools. And, um, yeah, they were, they've been going down as well. So, as you said, if the feeder school is, is suffering, which we have sent help to one of the feeder schools, um, like I think right when I was first elected, and they're trying to turn things around at that school. Um, they had a, a huge turnover in employees there, so some of the teachers that have been there for years have left, so now there's a lot of new staff that are trying to get their footing. Um, I'm hoping that, um, well, actually I've seen the slight improvement in some of the, like for example, Eagle School, their scores are going up slightly, um, for the 2023 um, test scores, not nearly where we'd like them to be, but at least they're on an upward momentum. And hopefully when they get to north, um, that will continue. Hey, we're just about out of time, John. So the last minute, uh, Damon, I appreciate your time this morning on the program. 30 seconds, anything else you can add to this situation? Um, just... Uh, well, continue to just pray for the board because we, we need we need all the help all the help and prayer we can we can get. Um, but also just work. Just, um, any parents out there, just this summer, work with your students. 
um, tell them that there probably are going to be some changes coming this next school year because we are definitely going to be heavily focused on discipline and parents be prepared if your child may be disciplined to support the school system. Damon, thanks. I appreciate it. That's uh, very good advice, by the way. Thank you.